So the first muscle we have is trapezius. It is a diamond shaped muscle that has four origins. The first part of its origin is from the medial part of the superior knuckle line. These are the two knuckle lines of the skull. So medial part of the knuckle line on both sides. Second origin is the external occipital protuberance. This is a protuberance in the occipital bone of the skull. After that, it originates from uh, this part, from the ligamentum nuque, because all of these vertebra are joined together with the ligamentum nuque. After this, the origin, fourth part, is from the C7 to T12 spine. So this is the entire origin of trapezius muscle. The trapezius muscle gets inserted in, we've studied this before, in the two bones of the shoulder girdle. The first part of, it, of its insertion is the upper fibers being inserted in the posterior border of the lateral one third of the clavicle and the middle fibers being inserted on the medial margin of acromion and the upper lip of the crest of the spine and lower fibers gets, get inserted right here. So this was overall about the origin and insertion of the trapezius muscle which is a diamond shaped muscle and the most dominant muscle of the back. So its nerve supply is the 11th nerve which is spinal part of the accessory nerve. This is the 11th cranial nerve. So do not forget this accessory nerve. Trapezius is known as a shrugging muscle of the body. Remember this relaxing pose when you talk about the trapezius actions. Let's divide it up into the action. Number one, the elevation of scapula, the neck extension, the retraction of scapula, and finally, the overhead abduction. These are the action of trapezius muscle. Next, let's talk about the latissimus torsi muscle. Now, this is a very big muscle of the lower back mostly, and it is right below the trapezius. So, the latissimus torsi has, because it's a big muscle, has a really large origin. So, the first part of the origin is that it arises from the posterior part of the iliac crest in its outer lip, which is the hip bone. Iliac crest is in the hip bone. This is the hip bone. So, posterior part of the iliac crest of the hip bone. The second origin is from the lumbar fascia, the fascia that exists over here. This is the lumbar area. After that, from the T7 to T12 spine. So these are the vertebra basically. And these are the spines that are protrusions of the uh, vertebra posteriorly. So T7 to T12 spine. And then the lower four ribs, one, two, three, four. And finally, the inferior angle of the scapula, which we studied earlier. So we have the latissimus torsi originating. Now we'll talk about its insertion. Although it has an extensive origin, it is inserted in a single area, which is in the humerus bone in the floor of the bicipital groove that we discussed a single insertion although huge origin so what nerve supplies the latissimus dorsi the nerve that supplies the latissimus dorsi is the thoracodorsal nerve that we studied in the brachial plexus or the nerve to latissimus dorsi the latissimus dorsi is known as the climbing muscle of the body keep this pose in mind when we talk about the actions of lat dorsi so let's break this pose down. Actions are number one, adduction, extension, medial rotation of the arm. So let's do it again. Number one, adduction, extension of arm, medial rotation of the arm. And these are the actions of lat dorsi. Next, we have three muscles that uh, arise in continuity. We've studied these in the scapula. These were in the medial border of the scapula, if you remember. So first is the levator scapulae. The name says it, it elevates the scapula. So it originates from the C1 to C4 transverse processes, okay? And it, get, it is inserted into the medial border of dorsal surface of scapula from the superior angle to the root of spine. Then we have the rhomboid minor and major. The minor originates from the C7 and T1 spine and it gets inserted into this tiny area which is opposite the root of spine. After that, we have the rhomboid major muscle. This originates from the T2 to T5 vertebra and gets inserted into the entire medial border of the scapula. All of them have the same nerve supply and it is the dorsal scapular nerve. If you remember, dorsal scapular nerve was a branch of the root of the brachial plexus. Apart from that, the levator scapulae also receives some branches from the C3 and C4. 
Now let's talk about the actions of these muscles. The levator scapulae, as the name says it, elevates the scapula along with the trapezius. And the rhomboids retract the scapula. So that's all about the actions of these muscles.